How's everybody doing? Well, welcome to the fish room. Uh, today's video, we are going to talk about how to make a DIY homemade lid. Uh, so we'll look at this tank first, because uh, this is a perfect example. Tank on aquarium. Uh, we have our lid right here. We have one hole, which I haven't always done this, but we have one hole drilled for feeding, uh, which is super convenient and it's nice and clean. Um, I've done it before where you cut them in half and you kind of make a, like a spacer in between. Um, this is the most efficient way. We're not going to get fish jumping out to keep the humidity down and it's really low and cost effective um, with also really good quality. Uh, so let's go ahead. We'll check out the materials you'll need for this and where to get them and uh, how to actually make these lids for any size tank. Okay, so here we are outside the fish room. We have all our supplies. Uh, some of this stuff is a little bit extra. Uh, it can be as simple as just buying your uh, lids here and getting some scissors and cutting away. Um, but the way I do it, I kind of think uh, you mess this up enough times to do it the right way. Um, I'll put a picture of this right now. So there's a, just a picture of the tag. Um, so this is around two foot by eight foot. Um, bring, little side note, bring a pair of scissors to the store and a measuring tape with you. Uh, measuring tape you don't really need because eyeball and cut in half. Um, but for your average person, I know I have a car, not a truck. Uh, this is not going to fit in your car and if it does fit in the back of your truck it's probably going to fly away because once you get some wind under this going fast on the highway it's going to be long gone so uh i always bring scissors because they won't really do it for you in the store and if they do it's going to take you like 20 minutes of sitting around um just go up find it in the store i always look for it as a clear greenhouse siding um if you look at that tag there you can kind of find it that way as well um but this is really well uh, they do make this in like almost a blue where it's uh, round and not kind of it has this has like the tight squares where it kind of goes up and turns direction um, this is much more flexible whenever you go to cut it you can always kind of press it flat and cut through it the other stuff will crack because i've bought them both um, definitely get this kind here uh, look at that tag like i said just visually look at this right now um, whenever you go to the store you'll see this in like metal you'll see in different colors you'll see uh, one that's almost a bluish and it'll just kind of be wavy instead of this is more like uh, straight lines coming across for the lid um, but this is really nice it was like $22 I think it, I, it was uh, this is a little bit over two foot by eight foot and whenever you have it on your aquarium you always want um, say like we're looking at a tank right now it's long ways you want it to be going this direction because um, this is going to be the strongest part here if I'm pushing down hard it's not going anywhere if you push this way it's going to flex uh, so you want the hard parts uh, the straight lines going on the frames of the tank. Whenever you're getting your measurements, how to cut it for your tank, uh, you wanna measure in between the braces and you wanna count for kind of that wiggle room where it actually can rest in there. Uh, so you want to be fitting and not falling into the tank if it does wiggle left, left or right, but you don't want it to be so tight that it doesn't fit into your slots. Uh, you always can trim away a little bit more, but this stuff is hard to cut um, small bits off of it. You kind of take a razor blade, you kind of chip away at it. Um, but that's kind of something as long as you do it the way I'm showing you, you do it right the first time, you don't have to worry about it. But to get back to everything else, these are the lids. I get them at Lowe's. Home Depot doesn't always carry them. Uh, you can check on their website. Go to like one of the larger stores. Um, but our Lowe's carries these. Um, and from there, all you really need is, I usually use a dry erase marker because um, you're going to have to measure off and make marks. Uh, you'll need a measuring tape. Uh, you'll need something that's straight you can go off of to make your straight line. And a little bit extra, I like to get a, I just did this recently, I'm really liking it. Get yourself a, like a wood drill bit, something like this here. Uh, and then a, you'll need a drill gun. And you wanna make a uh, kind of a guide first. So this is like my backstop, this is my guide. Uh, so you'll take this through the first time. You may have to go front and back, depending on how thick your wood is. Uh, and that's gonna be your feeding hole, so you don't have to go ahead every single day and lift the lid up and try to throw it underneath uh, and feed your fish. Uh, if you have a feeding hole, it's gonna be a lot easier. And if you have any slack, you even can, uh, or extra, you can cut off a little chunk and then it'll fit in these grooves and it'll kind of cover up the hole. You can slide it back and forth uh, to have that extra hole. You can cut that with a razor blade or scissors, but I think having that nice clean circle, uh, it does have a nice little touch to it. One last obvious thing you'll need is a pair of scissors. Uh, make sure you have a nice pair of scissors. I mean, it's obvious, but get a good pair of scissors that is able to cut through stuff. Um, but I'll show you how to cut this and how to measure it off. Really simple stuff, but I just want to show you how I do it. Uh, you don't need power tools or anything to cut through this. You can just take scissors. You kind of want to almost smash it down flat whenever you're cutting it through. Um, but we're going to go ahead. I wrote down some measurements for we're going to do a side of the 55 gallon tank. 
because uh, the brace there's two sides um, I have some of these lids throughout the fish room but some of the spots I don't so I really want to kind of fill it in and have these everywhere because these are really nice they won't sag over time um, different lids you can get like a fiberglass things like that or like acrylic um, I think it's fiberglass but uh, some type of glass it's almost like a plastic I've gotten this before I had them cut to size they'll kind of bow and sag over time this will not uh, so let's go ahead I'll uh, mark off my measurements I'll show you how to cut this okay so I got my measurements here so from front to back of the tank it's 11 and 5 eighths um, so all I do is I use a dry erase marker only because when I go back I can just kind of wipe all the spots off um, but I went every like at the front and the back and maybe twice in between I uh, measured it out just put a little dot there now I'm gonna take my straight edge and kind of go along and just make a straight line uh, line these all up uh, it's most important to get your lines on this bottom ridge because that's what's resting on the tank versus the top the top doesn't matter nearly as much um, we're gonna go ahead just make a nice straight line here Another thing that's good to mention is whenever you are going to cut the, this is our width, whenever we're going to cut the length, um, ideally you want to have the low part on the end of the tank. Um, so say right here we go straight across and then the end of the tank is right at a high point. Uh, you may want to go ahead and bump it over half an inch so it goes to the low point and then jump over here and you get to another low point. It doesn't always work out perfect like that, but if you can get um, the flat part on the bottom to be at the ends of your tank, it's going to just be a lot more secure of a lid and it's just gonna look a little bit better to be honest. Now coming down to cut this, it's super simple, but I just wanna kinda of show you how easy it is because sometimes people will tell you to use a certain tool or tell you to do things a certain way and it doesn't really plan out when you take it home and do it yourself. So I just wanna show you how easy this can be to cut. Um, so just taking a nice pair of scissors um, and then whenever you're cutting this, you kinda of wanna give it some force and press it down a little bit more flat. So if you can go in one straight shot without having to stop in the middle and uh, restart and go to the other side, that's going to be best. I could fast forward through this, but I'm just going to show you guys how that actually is. Don't rush it, take your time as best you can. If you can keep the scissors up tight and not keep re-gripping it, it's gonna be a lot smoother over edge because you'll get little um, kind of snares. If you ever have to clean these with like a sponge or a towel, uh, you'll get hooked on it. So if you can keep it nice and tight once you make that cut, don't keep re-pulling it out, putting it back in. Uh, try to keep scissors up to the edge. Cut, almost done. There you have it. Um, so I will go ahead and test this on the tank, make sure everything fits well. But I can just go through, take my hand along here, wipe off any extra of the marker. And uh, that's pretty much it. Just so you can see how, not super, super fast and easy, but it's not, it doesn't take that long. You don't need a power saw uh, and no cracks. It didn't crack at all. So that's definitely important as well. Okay, so it's a little too long, but I did test fit it front to back and it fits pretty good. Um, so now going from left to right, ideally I want to have my cut, I don't know if you guys can see this, um, right on the flat edge, even if I have to cut on both sides. Um, but no matter how I measure it, it's just a little bit up on the ridge. Um, but it's pretty close there, it's going to be on the center brace. Uh, so I have my line there, I'm not going to bore you guys with that. I'll make one more straight cut, and I'll show you how we drill our hole for feeding. Okay, we got that cut done. And a little side note, whenever you are cutting from uh, the long ways, I guess, or the width of it, it is definitely harder to go one straight shot. So here you can see a little bit of like a tear there. Um, I went cut as far as I could. The one side took the scissors out because once you get here, you can't really, there's not a lot of play. Once you're at the end of the scissors, you kind of have to take it out, go on the other side. Uh, so I would go the long cut first going along the ridges, uh, which will be easier. And then the shorter cut um, second, which will be cut almost halfway, take scissors out, come the other direction 
do your best you can because this is a little bit jagged, but the other piece is not uh, the way I kind of angled the scissors. So keep that in mind, not a big deal, but um, all right, now we're pretty much done here. Uh, for this, you can just take a razor blade, kind of do a little crazy cut, it'll work. Um, don't cut yourself, be careful. But I'm gonna use a little drill bit here. I did this the other day and I think it looks really good. So the most important thing with this is, obviously you wanna have a backstop so you're not screwing into your carpet, your floor, wherever you are. Uh, even if you're outside, you don't wanna destroy your drill bit. And then you wanna make a guide. So you take that drill through a piece of wood and I've kept this after I've used it once, so you'll keep reusing that. Um, and then you'll pick where you want your hole to be. Uh, for me, I just looked at the tank. I want it to be at the front, and I want it to be like three notches over in the tank. So right here looks about good for me. Um, have that bottom piece of wood, get our top ready to go. And you kind of can press down on this to kind of flatten it out so it doesn't go crazy on you. And this is very important. Whenever you drill this hole, you want to put it in reverse. So you're going, to the left instead of the right. The right will just grab and it'll throw you everywhere. You gotta go backwards on these. So, set it up, reverse. Easy as that. Apply enough pressure so it doesn't go crazy on you. Once it starts to catch, go slower. I went kind of faster, but it'll work perfectly fine. Um, sometimes it definitely is harder than it looks for that one. Um, so if you try to do it without the guide, I'm telling you, you're gonna have a lot of problems doing it. So get a guide set up, have a backstop. Get, once it gets straight, push it pretty hard, kind of flatten this out, because it is flexible, it's not gonna crack on you, it'll come back to its shape. Uh, now we have a nice little lid here. So let's go ahead and put it in the tank. I'll take a look at it and kind of compare it to its last lid, uh, which is definitely not working out for us. Okay, so here's the tank we're gonna put it on. Uh, you can see I already have one lid here. Uh, another note I wanna mention right now is if you have multiple tanks, you're gonna go ahead, this sounds silly, say you're gonna do 10, 10 gallon tanks, measure every single tank. I know it sounds silly and redundant, but if it's a different brand, anything different, I've done this before, where I make 10 lids all the same size, then some fit, some don't fit. Uh, just for example, over here, I took this lid off. Um, it goes on this tank. Um, but it fits perfectly down here on this top tank. It would fall through like it would sit on the frame But if I went Front to back and kind of wiggled it it would fall in so every day I would go and I'd lift up the tank Feed the fish and drop it down. It would fall every time where I have to like Kind of measure it in between these little lips here like even this one's close to falling through See how that little bit of distance there I can go back and forth you want it to be like right there even when it's wiggling uh, but right now it's like this one is really close but it fits it doesn't fall um so i actually swapped it it was on this tank i brought it up it works out great uh this lid right here i have it off right now to move another video but um that sits on that tank perfect both the same brand tank can't really explain why it's a little bit off but um measure every single tank if you're doing multiple tanks it's definitely going to save you time and it's going to save you a lot of headache um but over here you can see the old lid and it's getting a little bit distracted i know i'm mentioning a lot of more things and just how to make the lid uh, but it's because i've done it wrong five or ten times and it's really kind of annoying so i'm gonna help you guys out um these are the lids that i started with it, i thought they looked nicer it's like a poly five or something i forgot what they're called um but it's a really nice material when you first get them but every time they bow and they bow and it just really not ideal then you flip them over so they kind of bow the other direction they work it's just kind of annoying and they will eventually kind of fall into the tank because you lose a few uh millimeters at the end the more it bows it kind of gets shorter and shorter uh, but let's go ahead and actually put this on the tank there you have it simple enough uh, so this is how i want all my tanks to be and i've had these tanks for years now and i haven't gone around to finishing them because kind of it was good enough and i just kind of stopped making the lid so i went back and actually finally got some more but this tank now in my opinion is a perfect like breeder tank or a setup tank i'm um, still waiting to get some new fish for it but um, now we have a very easy feeding hole I can feed every day right here uh, once we get up more fish in here. Um, I don't have to worry about lifting the tank, but also I have a little bit of play, but it's not going to fall. Um, and if you have any heaters, you have any power strips, uh, you can feed those uh, airline tubes or the heater cords under these. So it actually works out really well. Um, but them not being uh, perfectly flat like a glass lid, it actually works better in my opinion. Most of the glass lids don't really sit perfect anyways. Just as a quick example, I have these glass lids that were made for this tank. 
I did kind of reverse the tab to the front, but they don't even rest down flat. They're a little bit short to the tank. So even the glass lids you pay top dollar for, $20, $30 a lid, uh, this is probably $50 to cover this tank. I could have done it for $5, but um, this is one of my like show tanks I want to make a little bit nicer. Uh, but just to show, even the, look at this gap. It's way bigger of a gap here. A fish could jump out, um, and that's pushed all the way to the front of the tank. This is the back, even though I have the lids here. But this is where you make your cutouts for your hang-on filters, things like that. But these lids are made for the tank, and they don't even fit it that well. So making your own custom lids uh, sometimes works out a lot better anyways, uh, let alone the actual cost. You're going to save money, too. But hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Um, where to find the lids, I buy them at uh, Lowe's, uh, the materials you need, how easy it really is, uh, how to prep it and measure it, things that are kind of simple but you don't want to make a wrong cut on this and kind of waste the whole sheet or waste the whole uh, section. Uh, if you do have multiple tanks, start with the big tanks first because if you mess it up and you have an inch or two that's just off, you can cut it again and put it on like a 10 gallon tank. Uh, so start with your bigger tanks. If you have a fish room you're doing multiple tanks, don't start with your 10 gallons because uh, those pieces will just kind of be a waste. Uh, if you want to make bigger holes uh, or you want to even cover this hole, use your scraps. They fit right in this and it's kind of like a little door. You slide back and forth. Uh, but there's nothing going to jump out of that hole right there. It'd be very, very, very rare if something did. Uh, this is probably one of my best tanks um, covered wise that I've had in a long time. I usually have a lot uh, more of the tank open. Like even up here, uh, if anything, I'll cover like the ends. I'll leave the middle open because I'm always getting in and out of these tanks. Uh, that way, I kind of keep down all the bubbles from the sponge filters, but then I can feed easily. Um, but not having this nice big, like inch and a half hole, perfect circle. It's gonna be a lot easier to feed. It's gonna look a lot cleaner, and I'm not gonna, I'm not ever gonna miss. So I'll wrap this video up right there. I didn't want to take too long, but I want to give you all those tips that I mentioned. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. If this was helpful at all to you, uh, definitely like the video. If you're not already subscribed. It doesn't cost you guys anything. It does help me out. Thanks again for watching, guys. I'll talk to you in the next video. Check out some of these older videos I'll post here on the screen. And I hope you guys are all doing well. You're staying healthy. Uh, have a good one. Talk to you guys soon.